ladies, and welcome back from lunch. We hope you enjoyed your lunch, and we wish we could have enjoyed that lunch with you, but this is the time that we're living in right now, and this is how we're doing things. So uh, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is April Hardwick, and my husband Mark and I are serving with the Faith Mission uh, in Northern Ontario, and we are about three hours north of North Bay. We live here with our six kids. Uh, our youngest will be five in the fall and our oldest will be 18. So there's quite a spread between them. And we really enjoy working up here alongside the churches um, that we've gotten to know and just serving the Lord in such a beautiful part of our country. Um, so this afternoon, we're going to hear from Jessica again, and uh, we'll also be joined by Deborah again with a song and Laura Ann with a verse. So I think that means that you've met everyone, um, all the ladies from <laughs> Eastern Canada, uh, branch of the Faith Mission in Canada, except for Nicolette, who would have been joining us for her very first um, Faith Mission in Canada ladies retreat this spring, but... Um, Unfortunately, that's going to have to wait for you to, to all meet her. Her and her husband, Sam, have joined the work and they are uh, based just outside of Hamilton, Ontario, um, with their lovely family there. And um, they just actually joined very a very short time before all of this um, lockdown started taking place. So we're excited for everyone to get to know her and get to fellowship with her at a later date when we're actually able to do this in real life. Until then, uh, enjoy your afternoon. I trust that you'll be blessed by God's word that he brings through Jessica and through song uh, with Deborah. Have a great afternoon, ladies. Good morning, Big Mission ladies. It's so different not to be able to actually meet with you, but I just thought I'd share with you one small part of my town. I'm down at the the Napanee River, this is the waterfall behind me. You can feel the spray on your face sometimes. And in the fall, you can actually sometimes see salmon swimming up river, which is kind of cool. Um, I enjoy this park. It's so lovely with the waterfalls. And it reminds me uh, so much of how God has made so many beautiful things and he has made this world so that it's not boring to live in. Um, I've been thinking a little bit lately about Psalm 19 where it says, The heavens declare the glory of God, the skies display His craftsmanship. Day after day they continue to speak, night after night they make Him known. And that's one way I connect with God and remember the majesty of who He is, is when I'm out in nature and see the amazing things that He has created. Um, this world is very different that we live in at the moment. And so that means that summer camp and VBS are going to be extremely different. Now, we're still in the midst of figuring out what that looks like. So just be a prayer for us, um, and especially the churches in this area, um, as we figure out VBS things. So please just pray for us that we would meet all the government requirements and that um, we'd still be able to reach a lot of kids for Jesus this summer, even though it's gonna look extremely different. Another prayer request for me is um, youth. Uh, we've gone online with both youth groups, but I've met with very little success as far as numbers coming. So just pray that when we can actually get back together, that the teens would want to come together and that this time they'd have a huge uh, desire to know about Jesus and not just have a place where they could come and play some games and hang out with their friends. Please, please pray for, for my Wilton and Verona group. Um, hope you guys have a great blessed summer. Stay safe and stay healthy. Bye. Ladies, for the second song, we're just going to sing Hosanna, praises rising. And one of the things that has been going through my head constantly, um, just through this isolation, has just been the reminder that God's word is not unchanged and that, chained, and that God is going to build his church. He is building his kingdom. Even now, one of the lines of the song um, says, hear the sound of hearts returning to you in your kingdom broken lives are made new. And I just thought as much as we've experienced the Father's love for us, I believe that God is, as he always says, he's always at work in um, in reaching those that are far from him, reaching the lost. And this song just reminded me of that, that what a God we have, a God that is working even now so that other people might be saved, other people might come to know him as Savior and Lord. He is a God that is worth praising. So if you would 
um, just sing with me, uh, join with me from wherever you are as we just praise our God together.
Hi guys, I hope you are refreshed. Welcome back. Hope you're ready for a little bit more because Ephesians has a little bit more for us. So chapter one, this lavish graciousness of God shown in redemption and forgiveness and spiritual blessings and everything we need adopted into his family. And then chapter two, made alive together with Christ how can you get any better, right? And then chapter three, we're made citizens of God's family. We have his power and love at work within us. We've got all that, the full package. And then chapter four, we need to actually grow up into it, right? We need to grow up into him as beloved children, chapter five, learning to walk in love, letting this play out in our relationships with family, coworkers, children, parents, you name it. And chapter six, learning to walk in the strength of his might, learning to let him fight the battles in the unknown realms for our struggles, not against flesh and blood. This is amazing. This is so practical. I love this book, six little chapters, three of them that are so much just setting the stage of who we are and then getting into that better have a real and profound effect on every relationship in our lives. It's not meant to just stay in our heads. It's it's a deep knowledge that's meant to transform every area of our life and every relationship of our life. I love that. I love how practical God is amidst the depth of him. So if you guys want to turn to chapter two of Ephesians, us being made alive in Christ, you and me, when we were dead in our trespasses, and sins in which we formerly, <laughs> formerly walked, all of us, according to the power of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that's now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too all formerly lived in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and the mind. We were by nature children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, he made us alive together with Christ. By grace we have been saved. And he raised us up with him and he seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Can you believe that? So as we looked about how... God raised Christ, seated him in the heavenly places. We have actually been seated with him in the heavenly places. I can't always grasp this, but I want to because it's true. And he did this so that in the ages to come, when all things are summed up under Christ, when all things are put back in order, that God in Christ would be able to show to us the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us. He has planned such great things we can't even imagine it. And I must tell you that I've really enjoyed the Book of Heaven by Randy Alcorn. I feel like it can really help inspire us to what's to come and try to have a good look at that. Um, but what God has planned for us to come, we can't even imagine, right? He took us from death to life, life seated us in the heavenly places, and is waiting to be able to show us the fullness of what he's planned for us and his kindness toward us. Like we haven't even tasted it yet. It's that amazing. This is exciting. And amidst a time where I think many of us are trying to secure our roots <laughs> to this world, to stay healthy, to, to stay safe and comfortable here, it's actually the time where God is wanting us to release our hold on this earth, to be able to take hold of all that he has for us right? And human nature, we cling to that, which makes us feel the most secure. Our security is in Christ, right? We are secure in him, but now we need to be letting go of all these earthly ways and earthly things in order to take hold of that for which he's taken hold of us. Amen? Amen. I love that. That is his heart toward his people. So for by grace, we have been saved through faith, that not of ourselves. It is the gift of God, not as a result of work, so that none of us can boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, that we would, which God prepared beforehand that we would walk in them. You know, this workmanship, I love this image because it's 
it's not just a product. We're not just a product of God. We're actually the very quality of God is being imparted to us through the process of being made holy and blameless before him. We are his workmanship. Workmanship that demonstrates that, that quality of the one doing it is actually being formed in us. Isn't that amazing? The quality imparted to a thing in the process of the making. We are being made and developed in the image of God, right? We're growing in that, outworking in our lives. And as that's happening, the very quality of God himself is being imparted into us. We are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. And I imagine you guys have tasted that. And I imagine you want more of that. And at a time where many are um, a little more stuck in how we can act out on that, I hope that you are uh, being encouraged to walk in what opportunities God has given you and to be alert to those. Some of you are... Um, pouring your hearts out, serving, and maybe busier than ever. And some of you wonder if you're even valuable in this part of history and time and what, what God's church is even doing. God has prepared beforehand good works for you to walk in. Be alert and walk in them. But know that there's times and seasons where we have quiet. There's times and seasons where we are full and busy. But there are good works there for you. Discover what that is. Fan into flame those things that God has put on your heart. Allow him to bring back to life those things that are stagnant and withering. We are his workmanship. In Ephesians, it goes on to talk about just how God in Christ has brought together the Jew and the Gentile, made us into one. We are his body, the church. He himself is our peace. Um... And we're no longer strangers and aliens, no longer strangers and aliens, but we are members of God's household. It says that in chapter two. So then, verse 19, you are no longer strangers and aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Christ Jesus being the cornerstone in whom the whole building being fit together is growing into a holy temple of the Lord. We have this solid foundation, Christ Jesus, the cornerstone, the prophets, the apostles, the work that they did, the church that was built by their work. We too are being fit into that and we too are contributing to this building up of God's kingdom in love as we do that. I love that image. You know, it's amazing that as we're being built into this holy temple, Paul still wants us to know and remember that past generations didn't have the understanding that we do now, that God intended from the very beginning, as it says in chapter three, that Gentiles would be brought into this knowing of God, the richness of what he has had planned, this mystery of Christ. And I love how he words it um, in chapter eight to me, the very least of all saints, this grace was given to preach to the Gentiles the unfathomable riches of Christ and to bring to light what is the administration or the outworking of this mystery, which for ages has been hidden in God who created all things, so that the manifold wisdom of God might now be made known through the church to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places. I love that, that at a time when maybe some of us are restricted in, in doing some of the work and ministry that we normally would, we have the opportunity to, each time that we come to God in faith and prayer, put our trust in him instead of fear, all those things, something is being declared in the heavenly places that we can't see, that's communicating to the rulers and authorities in the heavenly places, this wisdom of God that all that he has done and given to his people, his people are accessing. And that demonstrates to the heavenly realm, God's amazing wisdom and gift. Huh? I love that. This is in accordance with the eternal purpose, which he carried out in Christ Jesus, our Lord, in whom we have boldness and confident access through faith in him. So Paul doesn't want them to lose heart on his behalf. And then he goes into the prayer that I think many of us know, but I pray that this too would be fresh for you today. That this prayer that Paul prayed, we pray together, that for this reason we bow our knees before the Father, 
from whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name, that he would grant you, according to the riches of his glory, to be strengthened with power through his spirit in the inner man, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, and that you, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of Christ, which surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled up to all the fullness of God. This prayer that you would know the strength and the power that Christ may dwell in your heart, that he would make his home in your heart as you choose to put your faith in him, that you would be able to actually comprehend the breadth and length and height and depth and to know the love of God which surpasses knowledge, that we may be filled up to all the fullness of God. Let this image just be in your mind, the fullness of God. We are to be full, filled up with the fullness of God. If you're not today, meet with him. Let him remind you of all that you have in him that is already yours. And if you're living out of that, be encouraged. Keep on. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly beyond all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Isn't that our prayer now amidst these new days we're in, that he would do abundantly beyond all that we could ask or imagine in our own lives, in the life of the church, in our communities and towns. You know, he goes on, he makes this just jump from all of those amazing things we've just talked about to the outworking of that. That we would walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which we've been called in humility and gentleness with patience, showing tolerance for one another. There's one body, one spirit. Keep the peace, keep the unity, right? Isn't that crazy like we need to transition from those truths to like okay this is going to play out in real life keep the unity walk in a manner worthy of the lord we've all been given the grace and the measure of christ's gift and we're called to walk in that he gave some as apostles and prophets as evangelists pastors teachers for the equipping of the saints to attain to the unity of the faith to the knowledge of the Son of God, to be a mature man, a mature person, to the measure, the statue, statue that belongs to the fullness of Christ. We hear it again, the fullness of Christ, like we're called to walk in that. As a result, we're not to be tossed here and there. We're not to get lost in what's going on around us. We're to be rooted and grounded in Christ. And we're to speak truth and love, to grow up in all aspects of him, the head, which is Christ, from whom the whole body being fitted together and held together by what every joint supplies, according to the proper working of each individual part, causes the growth of the body, the growth of the church for the building up of itself in love. As we do our part, as we take responsibility for what we need to own in our own walk with God, in the ways that we miss the mark, in the ways that we doubt and don't step forward into what he has for us, as we own our part, it will cause the growth of the body as a whole. What you do will affect somebody else and somebody else, right? He wants us to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord. And he affirms together with the Lord to no longer walk as Gentiles in the futility of our mind. We did not learn Christ that way. If you go on to read chapter four and chapter five, there's such good stuff in there, so practical. Please read it. Please read that. There's even guidance for those of us who are married. There's guidance for those of us who have children, for those of us who have employers that feel like masters. <sighs> We have been called into these relationships and even amidst a pandemic, we still have these relationships and we need to find ways to invest in them and to allow God to have his way. And if you're anything like me, I've been living with five children and my husband, but five children all day long. 
for the last how many weeks and I'm ready for isolation. I don't think I've been isolated, it's been intense. And there's been dynamics to our relationships to work through and it's been a gift that way. I think that times like this sometimes drive it home to, to have our eyes opened and alert to what God wants to achieve in our own relationships and families. And whether those people are under your roof or spread out, take time with the Lord to ponder what relationships you need to invest in. If there's any forgiveness needing to be asked, whatever that may be, if you're being alert in your relationships and making the most of every opportunity, as we'll see, and God will have his way. Chapter six is an amazing chapter. Many of you probably know the armor of God. And once we get from relationships to the armor of God, here we have again, listen to this, you guys. Finally, verse 10, be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Put on the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand firm against the schemes of the devil. This is so applicable, isn't it? For our struggle, it's not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the powers, against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. Therefore, take up the full armor of God so that you will be able to stand and resist in the evil day and having done everything to stand firm. Stand firm, therefore, having girded your loins with truth, I actually like that image when you imagine imagine a, a skirt being pulled up, tucked into the belt, but gird your loins with truth. Truth. We need truth. We need to be in his word daily. Make that your effort. Whether it's one verse a day, one psalm a day, one chapter a day, you need his truth. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. You have right standing before the Lord. You have no need to shrink back. Shod your feet with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Get your shoes on. You're going to be ready to go. God has good works for you to do. You need your feet ready. Ready to bring peace to those that need it. In addition to all, taking up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one. And take up the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And with all prayer and petition, pray at all times in the spirit. And with this in view, be on the alert with all perseverance and petition for all the saints. Guys, we need to be on the alert. We can get lulled into complacency these days. We can be distracted by so many things. We need to be alert and persevere and petition for the saints, to pray for those that need to persevere, and to pray on Paul's behalf that utterance may be given to him in the opening of his mouth to make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel for which he's an ambassador in chains, that he would proclaim it boldly as he ought to. We know that Paul did that, and that's our prayer for all of us as well, isn't it? That we would make known with boldness the mystery of the gospel, knowing that God, in love and kindness has gifted us with this salvation and that we get to point others to him. We need to be bold because we have confidence and we have the very power of God at work within us. Peace be to the brethren and love with faith from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be to those who love our Lord Jesus Christ with incorruptible love. These are the words of God for you guys. I encourage you to take time with them. I encourage you to spend time during this strange time really seeking what God wants you to be doing with it. Really making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Finding what he has for you. Walking into those good works. And above all, knowing that your place is in him. And this is where we live out of. So when we're lost overwhelmed, anxious. We come back to this place being found in Christ with everything we made. As it says in Timothy, we have all things pertaining to life and godliness. It's been fun sharing with you. I wish we could have met in person. I hope that we will one day. I hope you guys can end this time by clicking the link below uh, for another song. I hope it will be a great encouragement to you, a reminder of what's to come, a reminder that this is a journey we're on but this is not the destination and God's encouragement along the way 
And um, I'd like to close in prayer. Thanks, ladies. Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you for your word. God, thank you for preserving it for us. Thank you for changing lives and transforming them like you did in Paul and in our own lives. Lord, may we remember our story when we heard the word of truth and when we believed in it for our salvation. God, would you bring this back to our mind with grateful hearts. God, would you meet us where we are all across this country in a very unique situation. God, would you bring to mind all that we need to know? Would you remind us that this is not the end? Would you remind us of what you have planned for us? The surpassing riches, riches of greatness because of your kindness toward us, God. Would you remind us and help us to live above these earthly things, but live with a heavenly perspective, an eternal perspective. Father God, will you help us to stand firm? The days are evil. The time is short, Father. Help us to be alert and stand firm. Secure, strengthened, provided for by you. God, would you give us wisdom, each one of us, in any area of any relationship that we need to make right, in any way that we need to come alongside others. Would you help us connect with our community and our church and our kids and our parents, Father? Would you have your way among us? Would every relationship we have be a demonstration of your love toward us? Thank you, God, for your lavish grace in our lives. Help us to live out of that place. We give thanks in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. Thanks, ladies.